Hey everyone, Gillette here. Today we're going to go over a uh, basic setup of XSplit and also take a look into some of the uh, more advanced stuff that a lot of tutorials don't cover uh, regarding setting up all your different sources, uh, game source versus uh, screen region capturing, uh, and also setting up your rates and quality settings to make sure you have the best screen possible. So, starting off here, I'm going to assume that everyone watching this does have a Twitch TV account. If so, or more to the point, if not, uh, go to twitch.tv and set up an account. Uh, from there, have XSplit installed, start it up, and the first place we're going to go down is in the Tools menu, go to General Settings, go to the Channels tab, and add a channel. In this case, it's going to be Justin slash Twitch TV. In here, you're just going to put in your Justin TV username and your password, and it should pick it up automatically, except that's, a, that's not my password, so let's try this again. And I also can't spell my username. There we go. Picked it up, picks it up right away. Uh, and we'll come back to the rest of this later, so just leave that how it is for now. I'm just hitting cancel because I already have this all set up. So, from there, you're then going to come into your broadcaster window, and there's a few things you're going to want to take a look at. First off, and probably most importantly for everything, is the resolution that you're capturing at. Whatever you set in the resolution menu here is going to be the default resolution that you're streaming at. Ideally, if your computer can support it and your internet connection can support it, you're going to want to capture it whatever your native resolution is. In my case, that's 1900 by 1200. In reality, however, uh, a lot of PCs and internet connections can't actually support that. On mine, I'm more limited by my PC than on my internet connection, so I'm capturing at 1440 by 900. So the important thing to note here is that you can choose basically any resolution you want, but you definitely want to have the same aspect ratio if you can. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get weird green bars on the side of your screen, or things are going to be really distorted. The other consideration when changing the resolution here is that you're going to have some downscaling on your video. What this means is that you'll have uh, additional pixelation, you'll have uh, artifacting when you're, uh, when you're broadcasting. So it's not ideal, but as long as it's relatively close to the resolution, the image quality is still pretty good. Uh, so what I found on my stream, at least, is that this resolution is pretty much perfect for a consideration between CPU load and internet connection. The other thing you can do, if you do have a beefy PC but your connection can't handle it, is you select your native resolution here, so for me it would be 1900 by 1200, and then you'll go into your stream settings, channels, channel properties, and change the resolution here. Uh, you can ignore this, it's just telling you that the best bet is to use your default resolution. Uh, and you can set whatever you want for your actual stream resolution. This results in a much higher image quality that gets broadcasted, but it's a, a bit of a higher CPU load since it has to do basically the same thing it would if you were changing the resolution in the first place. Uh, so, for example, my old setup, uh, when I was just streaming StarCraft II, I was able to capture 1900 by 1200, but I would stream at 640 by 400 because my internet connection couldn't handle any higher. So, moving on from there, there's a few different, way, few different ways to capture what, whatever you want on your screen. First off, there's the Add Screen region. Basically, when you get this, you'll get a red thing, and you can select however much of the screen you want. So, you're going to want to capture whatever screen your game is on. Basically, what this does is it will do software capture of your desktop and whatever is overlaid on top of that. So, if I launch Ventrilo and I drag it onto the screen here, you'll be able to see it. The other option you can have here is to add a game. Now, if you have a game running, you'll be able to select it. So I'll fire up World of Warcraft here, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Now, the advantage of using Game Source, which I should note is only available if you have a expert license, it's not available with the, uh, the free trial, uh, is that it does direct capturing from DirectX, so you get much, much higher frame rates in-game, because it's a much lower CPU load. So in this case, now that I have WoW running, I go to add a game, and WoW's in the drop-down menu, and boom. Everything's there, we're good to go. So what you can do is uh, then add additional things to your, uh, into your stream. You can add additional screen regions, you can add media files, uh, you can add webcams, until you get something that can basically look like this, um, except I don't have WoW included with it. So we'll add WoW here, send it to the back, basically the, the list you have down here for screen sources 
will control what you're looking at. So there we go. You can see WoW behind everything now, including my beautiful face. So I'll exit out of WoW. And the last thing to take a look at here, and probably the most important since Thresses is, is pretty trivial to set up, is to take a look at your actual stream settings in terms of your rates and what you're using to encode. So, because I have a bit of an older CPU, I've got an i7-930, it's overclocked to 3.7 GHz, um, I have to use one of the faster presets for encoding. What that means is you'll get some additional pixelation and artifacting when you're streaming, but it's a much lower CPU load. Quality, i found, generally isn't too important. You, you can stick with 6 or 7 in just about every case and you'll be fine. Uh, the encoder preset's really what's going to make a big difference. What you're going to want here is, it depends entirely on your CPU load. You'll get amazing image quality if you use something like placebo or very slow, but in my case, on my CPU, I can't even use that. It pegs it completely, so I had to go for ultra fast. So really with this, it's going to be trial and error. You're going to want to keep Task Manager open while you're streaming, take a look at your CPU load, and, and see what you're going with. Um, if you're streaming World of Warcraft in particular, the game is extremely CPU bound, so you're going to want to try to keep your, uh, your CPU load from XSplit as low as possible. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, resolution, we covered this earlier, but ideally default stage resolution, but you can downscale if you need to. So the other things that come up a lot is the max bit rate and buffer size. Um, there are people who say have a higher buffer, have a lower buffer, just leave it the same. It makes almost absolutely no difference from what I've seen. So it's important to note that this should not be set to whatever your connection is. If you set it too high, you're going to get drop frames. If you set it too low, you're going to get drop frames. So what you want is to have sort of a happy medium uh, for it. So I have a 7 meg upload. I've got this set to 3500. The reason I have it set to 3500 is that I can't seem to get higher bandwidth than that to the Twitch TV servers. So on the screen, you can select which Twitch TV server you want to go to. Ideally, you want this to be as close to you as possible, so for me, that's the one in Virginia. So, uh, what you do here, select the ones closest to you, enter your bitrate, and hit test bandwidth. This is a really important feature that they've added in the newer versions of XSplit, and what this will do is make sure that you can actually broadcast at the uh, bitrate and resolution you've specified without getting a lot of latency issues. So this will take usually about a minute, maybe a bit less, to run through, and we'll give you a little pic a little icon up here where the, the swirly is, telling you, you know, red light, yellow light, green light. If it's red light, it means your bitrate's set way too high or your connection to that server is really bad. If it's yellow, it means you're probably okay, but you might see some dropping. And if it's green, you're good to go. Generally, you're going to want to run through this a couple times. Um, ideally, get green. Uh, one thing I found is that connection quality can really vary by time of day and just <laughs> general internet in, you know, in the entire world, depending on what's going on. Uh, so you may have to change the location you're going to occasionally. So right now, for example, I'm getting a yellow light, but because I'm still broadcasting at this, it's pretty much okay. Uh, I'd recommend going through it two or three times. Uh, that's about all you need to know for this. I may have forgotten something. Um, I did, actually. Audio encoding. With the free version, all you get is this, and only in mono. And it sounds like crap. So I'd highly recommend getting the paid version, especially while it's still cheap, if you're interested in streaming on a regular basis. Uh, if you have automatically record broadcast check, this will record it to your hard drive in FLV format. If you have a fast hard drive, not too much of a concern, but it can eat up a lot of space. Um, so uncheck it. If you want to record locally, you can choose under your broadcast menu. From there, once you got all this set up to broadcast, go to your broadcast menu, click on your stream, and it should go. Sometimes it'll take a couple tries, so make sure you have your dashboard open on Twitch TV in another window, just so you can keep track of it. Uh, that's about it. If there is anything I missed, or if you have any questions, please just leave a comment below. Uh, send me a message on here or on Twitch. My Twitch account is twitch.tv slash GilletteSRK. I'll include a link in the uh, description so you can take a look there, take a look at the recordings, and see what this looks like in action. Thanks.